Hey babes, it's Jenny Procopi from chronicbabe.com and you're here with me today for another AWAP Wednesday. AWAP stands for as well as possible and in all things I do for Chronic Babe, that is my wish for you, that you live the most kick-ass life possible in spite of chronic illness. So today we have a question from a fellow Chronic Babe and she writes... Jenny, I was reading a post on Tiny Buddha and it hit me between the eyes and is really like your message in many ways. So the quote is this. You know what I was really terrified of? Deep inside me, there was the awareness that even if I fit every symptom in the book, I had no excuse to live half a life. Somewhere in there, I knew I wasn't really broken. I was terrified of what my responsibilities would be if I allowed myself to be truly whole. So our fellow chronic babe asks, how do you address the fear of being AWAP? If I start to put myself out there and things start to take off, what if I can't keep up? I'm truly terrified of that. Usually meeting one responsibility well means more will be added. Thanks for all you do and for inspiring me and addressing the tough stuff. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your gratitude and for recognizing the work I do. I'm so happy to serve you in this way and especially to answer this question, which is something I have dealt with many times and I know a lot of you have dealt with too. When the question of what will I do if this really works or how will I handle big success comes up for me, when I start to be afraid of that, I try to recognize it and take a deep breath. <laughs> Paradoxically, it is when I get closest to the things that mean the most to me, that are the most close to my heart, that are the biggest kind of success I could dream of, those are the moments that I get the most afraid and I start to resist taking those last steps to complete that task or that mission. And um, that kind of fear can really hold you back from the success that you are really worthy of. If you're interested in reading more about this topic, Stephen Pressfield has a fantastic book called The War of Art. And it is all about resistance, about our kind of natural training to hold hold short right before we succeed <laughs> and why we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't hide our gifts from the world and our abilities from the world out of fear. So check out that book. A lot of fear around success comes from all the unknowns, all the things we wish we could know right now and can't. You asked, what if this goes really well? And what if I get handed more responsibilities? So I've got a few thoughts for you about handling this. First, I would really like you to game out what this success would be. I'd like you to really write out what it looks like, what it takes to get there, who it impacts, all that stuff. Spell out all the details, what it might mean for your friendships or your colleagues or your family or your romantic partner, whatever area of your life this success will impact. I want you to really write out in detail what that's going to mean for you and everyone around you, what that could look like. Really describe it. Use a lot of adjectives. Paint a picture for yourself of what this success could mean for you. The first thing I want you to start writing out is what kind of support will you need every step of the way to achieve this success? Do you need someone to pick up the slack of chores if it means you're going to work harder or work longer hours? Do you need help guarding your energy so you can allocate it more intentionally to the task at hand? Do you need more help from your team at work? Do you need more time on the phone with friends to talk this stuff through? I want you to make this list and then I want you to keep it close at hand. Put it in your phone, put it in a Google Doc, you can access it all times. And then when you start to feel fears around success as you take each step forward, you can remind yourself that you've planned for this and you know how to get the support you need. And then go get that support, girl, because you got the list, no excuses. <laughs> Okay, the second thing I want you to make a list of are your fears, your specific 
fears. I want you to write down every single fear that pops into your brain. And again, this is a living document, something you can put in a Google Doc or someplace else to where you can access it on your phone. If you're out running errands and suddenly you get freaked out, you can write down what your fear is. I want you to start to make a list and put a name to these fears instead of letting them like play around in your head. <laughs> Are you afraid of being handed more responsibility? Then you can start planning now how to have a careful conversation with your supervisor about your abilities and your limits. Let's say it's a personal thing, you're learning how to work out regularly, you're doing it every day, and now you're worried that you're gonna plateau and you don't know how you're going to push yourself beyond that. You can start planning now. You can start talking to fitness advisors or your doctor and make a plan. Think about what options are going to be available for you so that you make the healthiest next step when you're ready. Okay, so you've got your two lists. You've got your list of the support that you'll need every step of the way to achieve this big success that you've been dreaming of, that you can envision. And you have your list of the fears that are nitpicking away at you. And you've got some planning that you're starting to do to kind of answer each of those fears with facts, with answers, with support, with reason. <laughs> so you can really start to plan and envision how this is going to happen, even if it means unconventional ways to approach it or sources of support that maybe your friends or colleagues aren't used to you needing. You can build this if you are really intentional about it. The biggest fear that I hear from chronic babes and one that I felt myself is what if I continue to get or start to get a lot better, but I'm not cured, but people see me getting better and start having these expectations that I'm cured, that I'm all better, and then I can't live up to their expectations, and then suddenly they think I'm not really sick, or maybe I was faking it. There's, there's all kinds of concerns about this and worries about this, and a lot of times it can hold us back from taking steps forward. This fear, my dears, it is a chestnut. It is one that I hear over and over from you and one that pops up into my head quite often and I have to like push it away. Here's the thing about that fear. The people who love us and support us want us to be successful. So what happens is that when we start to get better, when we start to get more active or work more or, be, or laugh more, if they start to see improvement in some area, which is great, they might really get their hopes up because they're so excited, because they love us and they want us to feel better. And what that sometimes leads to is unrealistic expectations because they're expecting some kind of linear progress that has no bumps or curves. And that's not necessarily how it's going to be for us. You might start to get a little bit better and then hang out here for a while before you go up again. And people who haven't seen that process may take that initial bump up in progress or success as signed that everything is better. And that makes for challenging conversations. It's up to us to set the tone of these interactions and conversations. It's up to us to educate people about how we get better and how we change and how we evolve and letting them know that we are changing and evolving and we don't know everything that's to come. And so if we can focus in these conversations on appreciating their support saying things like, thank you so much for your support. I know you're really excited and it means the world to me. And I know I can count on your support as my progress continues because progress is not linear. It's got lots of dips and rises. If you can say that to someone in whatever way is natural for you, you're setting up realistic expectations, which sets the tone for really awesome conversations and support. We are often the most <laughs> powerful source of limiting beliefs. We may hear a bunch of crap from friends and family or coworkers or strangers. We may read a bunch of stuff on the internet that's really disheartening. But honestly, in my experience, we are often the engineers of our <laughs> plateau. We often are the ones who keep ourselves from moving forward because we are afraid. But if we plan out what we want success to look like, 
if we build sources of support, if we face our fears with facts and planning, and if we approach the whole process with a lot of gratitude and joy, we can achieve so much. I've seen it over and over in many of you, and I've experienced it in my own life. So keep at it, keep setting yourself up for success. I know you can do it. I would love to hear your comments below. If you have worked on this issue, and I know you have, <laughs> I would really love to hear your story. So please, if you're not already at chronicbabe.com, hop over to the site, jump into this post, and add your story in the comments. I'm, I expect a very robust conversation. Now, while I've got you here, I would really be remiss if I did not talk to you for a second about two things. One is our free Chronic Babe newsletter. I send it out every week, so you get notice every time I post a new video or a blog post, anytime I do interviews with experts or giveaways. I've got a book I'm working on that's gonna come out in the next couple months. I want you to know about it first. So hop on over to the site, um, or you can go to newsletter.chronicbabe.com slash sign up and get the free newsletter so you don't miss a thing. The second thing is our Chronic Babe Secret Club. I love it so much. It's our subscription service. It's $25 a month. And what you get is week to week training on very specific topics. So we've had months where we've talked about sex and relationships and work and spirituality and guilt and difficult emotions and challenging conversations. We are talking about it all. And the Secret Club gives you a chance to get to know a bunch of other women through our private super Super stealth Facebook group. You get weekly emails from me and support. You get a big resource PDF. I do a big teleseminar where I give a talk on a topic and then I open it up for live Q&A and you get snail mail. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you get with a subscription and people are loving it. So I hope you'll check it out and consider joining us. Okay, that's it for me this week, babes. I hope you've liked this video. Please let me know what you think. And until we meet again, be a web. Mwah. Beep. Blah, blah, blah. The first is, <laughs> what's the first? <laughs>